Thank you so much for attending this session. It's really difficult to uh, speak after the lunch break. We have uh, quite a, a dense subject matter ahead of us, but I'm sure it'll be enlightening. As I already mentioned this morning, the second part of the workshop will be devoted to export uh, data to uh, perform the CSWMM and um, assess all the information. We need to know how the storm water movement manager how it works, the SWMM. We will be repeating the methodology we covered this morning. Uh, ahead of us, there is an hour and a half to two hours of theory on the mathematical model. Once we know how it actually <coughs> works, we will be able to manage GV SIG data better. better. This is going to be quite uh, tough, especially for those of you who are not hydrologists. So uh, please be so kind to pay close attention. These presentations will be available as soon as Mario uploads them onto the website. The second part of the uh, workshop will uh, run as follows. First, uh, project introduction. Then we will go more into the science with an introduction to the SWIM program. What kind of information can you enter in this software? The kind of calculations to have some general uh, knowledge to then move on to work with purely GV SIG models. So it was going to start with theory, then move on to the practical side of the event. Then we will export this to SWMM and uh, we'll go back and forth. We have uh, an hour and a half or so for the practical uh, Part of the um, workshop will have nonetheless a Q&A round in case uh, somebody wants to ask questions or needs uh, clarification. As you can imagine, we will use a, a scalable comprehensive data model. We will uh, um, cover EPA SWMM. This is a, for you to learn how GVSIG can be extremely helpful in planning uh, hydrology in cities. And uh, of course, uh, this workshop is not uh, enough to become an expert in urban hydrology. So this only in intends to be a brief introduction those of you who are not in hydrology, you will be learning uh, concepts uh, on this subject matter, but uh, you will get a broad idea of how GV SIG works. We will be using sextant and uh, topology extensions plus INP-COM. There is a hydrologic uh, tool which is called COMAX. It's not urban, uh, it's not for a urban purpose but for rural hydrology purpose. So, so it's a uh, Excellent. Uh, this tool was uh, presented uh, last year in this same uh, conference in the previous edition. 
this morning we produced a network. Now we're going to add to it to perform hydraulics and hydrology uh, analysis and assessments. The extension reads a shapefile and uh, DBAs, DBS. We also have a post -gree SQL. We have to be able to export to DBF appropriately. And uh, in a relational database environment, this provides a greater power. SWMM presents uh, numerous uh, benefits. The main drawbacks would be not having a GIS uh, interface because this uh, extension solves some problems with uh, SWMM. Another drawback of the latter is that it is a single dimensional model. It doesn't have the ability to manage information when flows, the flow of data is so, is so large that uh, it the data doesn't fit and therefore uh, doesn't uh, move adequately. We have uh, models like XPSWMM. Uh, so when uh, the data does not fit the pipes then uh, when when water there's when there's t too much water for the pipes available this water runs uh, superficially so we have two levels surface water and uh, ground water so we also have a dual flow, so there's a flow below our network and a flow above when both systems interact, both surface water and ground water systems. So this is the main drawback of SWMM. Nonetheless, it's still very useful because the analysis is perfectly useful when there is no overflow and when part of the flow is uh, expelled uh, by the system we can uh, see in a map on a map where uh, there is a an overflow and uh, SWMM will continue to be an uh, appropriate uh, tool because it will n not only manage uh, the uh, inflow adequately but uh, it will identify where there is an overflow so in the future we need to improve the software but much has already been done we've uh, already mentioned uh, this uh, extension here, the INP-COM, but for networks uh, sorted by topology, the extension is appropriate because GVSIG connects with some US software with the same communication um, using INP. Since there are developers and uh, IT people, SWIM SWMM is developed in C, and uh, GVSIG is 
in Java. So the best thing would be working through INP files uh, or through scripts. We, we can use uh, non-INP files, but this uh, is more of uh, internal design. And we also have data uh, reading. It's, uh, there's a beta version currently. And uh, the idea is for this to be automated in short. This is a screen we saw this morning. We have a data model structure. It's a node arc structure with all the different uh, tables. In the uh, zip file, uh, we could simplify using nodes, arcs, uh, arc dat, arc est, and we include the mathematical model. Hence, we have two more layers, and we have two uh, node node related. Uh, tables and on the right you can see the two layers that are uh, related uh, matched to um, arcs so we have uh, vertexes and subcasters that need to be generated furthermore we may use different rasters to give us uh, information to perform an inadequate analysis uh, like a digital elevation model, climate model, and what have you. And then we have other tables uh, like uh, the like swim parameters, like uh, rainfall. And uh, by duplicating these uh, layers, uh, we can actually plan projects. Let's see how EPA SWMM works, and uh, also something about uh, urban hydrology. To design a sewers drainage network, you need to bear in mind the infrastructure re design return period. So this period varies depending on the risk one wishes to take on, say between five to 10 years. And this return period defines our design uh, reign. So we prepare our infrastructure to ensure its operation, adequate operation, uh, right here for this specific reign. So to conventional engineering, uh, so whatever happens, in this uh, period, whatever happens to our network regarding extraordinary uh, returns, like uh, return periods of uh, 150 to 500 years, this is difficult to assess because uh, classic engineering has taught us to calculate for a specific uh, return period. Short uh, periods of rain can uh, give way to uh, pollution because the, the, there has to be a discharge through spillways and when there are heavy rains, 
there are floods on the surface. This problem requires assessing infrastructures in a more complex way and bearing in mind numerous factors. Also, we need a mathematical model to analyze what uh, happens to our infrastructure as uh, one as uh, s events that are not foreseen happen. So we have typical events and uh, we have to s uh, realize that uh, this needs uh, a specific management so we can foresee uh, all of these uh, possibilities. But uh, sometimes there are extraordinary events and we need to see how the, the system is going to work or is going to respond to this. So we need to take into account the interconnection between the underground uh, piping system and the surface elements. If there is uh, a surplus of water, if there's excessive water, the system will be, will not be uh, enough to uh, manage all the amount of water. There is a Spanish version of SWMM which allows for some analysis. This was uh, translated by the Polytechnic University of Valencia. It's uh, there in your handout. The last version, which would be 5.0, it includes for the functionalities to deal with this side of the graph I'm pointing out because in the US, They include treatment in network nodes to treat flows online, and it bears, it has low impact developments, i.e., scenarios in uh, specific basins where you can uh, decrease runoff and. Uh, this makes pollution drop, and these problems are being addressed through calculation methodology. The Spanish version, again, is not uh, the latest, and uh, the last version is uh, appropriate for both small and uh, big events, and we need uh, tools to minimize the impact of both. And if we look at the uh, software itself, we have uh, the methodology here. First, we will have a design rain. This will uh, be transformed to a runoff flow. This will enter our network and will pass through it. And uh, it will be discharged at a, an end node. So let's zoom in. We have this uh, design rain. It can have different uh, shapes. Uh, there are uh, different possibilities, uh, synthetic uh, rains, but it's better to use uh, real data, uh, data from uh, the rainfall, real rainfall. So we will have to design the rain if we don't have uh, rainfall data. I 
we can use a software that, that is downloadable online and depending on the uh, duration of the rainfall it uh, uses uh, alternating blocks I'll explain this later and then tr the tr transformation rain runoff it depends on the uh, surface area of the basin the infiltration model and uh, climate parameters once the flow is in our network if we have the data we need to bear uh, we need to take into account the dry water flow and modeling the behavior of nodes and arcs and possible interaction with groundwater this is a parameter that uh, the model allows uh, assessing but we need uh, information on uh, the substrate and um, I haven't seen network models that include the interaction with groundwater because of the difficulty in uh, working around the, this, uh, these data. And finally, we have the discharge uh, to the network with different types of uh, discharges. So these are other work hypotheses. The software allows for unitarian uh, uh, rainfall and waste uh, networks. So unitary would be one single uh, network for, for everything. The software manages quantity and the quality of water. It's not an erosion sediment transportation model. There are other open source models to that aim. So this is not the case. This does not uh, transport uh, sediments or uh, waste. Also, it, when assessing the amount, the quantity of water in our network, we are going to incur in suppositions and uh, simplifications, and the result is going to be the uh, sum of uh, numerous variables, and this always needs to be questioned. When it comes to water quality, the data that we need to perform a water quality assessment is going to be even more complex and we are going to need to use even more assumptions. So uh, this is going to be very difficult, very complex, unless we can take uh, real data and collate them with the uh, pollution data. So the software manages amount and quality or quantity and quality, but uh, as, as regards quality, we need to know if, about pollutants, the land use on surface, how, the different uh, elements transported in water. Uh, unless we have all this information, it's very difficult to know. In the U.S., we see the type of pollutants uh, in the land and how they are transported uh, these work in the US but uh, they have not been reproduced in Spain and those who have conducted the same studies in Spain they haven't uh, really managed to to um, use this information well so we don't have that information uh, available generally and finally the risk management model to be used will be a 1D model. It's a model whereby our network uh, works uh, underground and if there is a node that is uh, in charge, the water is expelled. And SWMM virtually understands this water is a deposit, as you can see on the screen. And the software allows for when the level goes back to 
normal, this uh, expelled water is uh, restored in the system. And if this is not possible, it is uh, disposed of uh, altogether. So this water, when uh, it overflows, it either is uh, drawn back into the system or expelled. Uh, so it's the uh, pounding off or pounding on. You can build a 1D, 1D model with SWMM. I can connect uh, these nodes on the surface with an open channel and reproduce uh, the geometry of a street. And I can actually assess uh, how the system uh, behaves in s on the surface. If I can do this with a few nodes, uh, it might be simple, but sometimes there are intersections, slopes, and uh, you need to see how simple or complex uh, the uh, the uh, uh, system is at a given point in time. Some say it's uh, good to use 1D, 1D models, but uh, crossroads or intersections uh, require uh, 1D, 2D models. That is, you work underground in one's network with a 1D model like SWMM, and then this is, and we connect nodes to uh, the field. So we have a uh, elevation model which is quite accurate and for every network uh, node the raster in the surface interacts with our ground uh, underground network and if there is a transfer of flows this happens in every node and we can see uh, on the surface when there is a rainfall that is out, uh, we can see how this uh, rainfall behaves uh, in, on the surface and uh, how this affects uh, the uh, urban landscape. Uh, the computation is much uh, more complex than you, when using a 1D model and some say that it's interesting to work with a 1D model in one's network and then implement a 2D model in specific uh, areas uh, where we want to know how th a specific area reacts to uh, extraordinary uh, f phenomena. So this is just to give you a, a general overview and the different possibilities using GVSIG and SWMM, and we will cover the benefits of uh, the of these uh, systems and drawbacks. Without further ado, let us uh, dive into the uh, software. Let me simply mention that the main uh, features include number one, it's an open source uh, code, hence. The uh, Polytechnic University of Valencia has translated uh, this software into Spanish. So, being open source, uh, some has uh, have been able to translate this to uh, standards. So, uh, some people can use this for other purposes and everybody can add to this. Also, some use the open source, improve it and sell it. There are some uh, softwares that run on SWMM but have been uh, uh, improved uh, with uh, advanced uh, functionalities and are then sold in the market. Another uh, benefit or advantage of SWMM is that uh, 
you, it can manage uh, networks regardless the size and uh, as many uh, stretches of network as we want. And, and version 5.0 will include uh, a user-friendly intuitive interface. One of the main hydrologic uh, features in are the fact that it allows for entering um, variable <laughs> rainfall uh, in time and space. It also simulates evaporation in climates. Uh, this is especially important. It also simulates the melting of the snow. It simulates uh, infiltration and runoff. Moreover, each basin or mini basin can have uh, sub basins associated and uh, allows for uh, the calculation of uh, transfers and movement of water interbasin. As for uh, the water quality model, it simulates the buildup of pollutants on different services. It simulates the wash off of pollutants during uh, periods of rain. It simulates the reduction of pollutant uh, uh, buildup and uh, how these are scattered and propagated in the network. And then version 5.022 includes uh, treatment uh, serve, uh, treatment functions defined by the user. This is regards uh, water quality as regards um, quantity of water, amount of water. This allows for endless uh, cross-sectional sections uh, for ducts and uh, pipes. So y you can always custom this. In, in open sections, you can model any uh, section. Moreover, SWMM allows for modeling pumps, spillways, deposits, and we can uh, establish control rules. So we can define uh, pumping in a given point in time, and this pump works uh, on the basis of some very simple use rules. Uh, we, we have a spa some space, some time variables or parameters. It allows for the inclusion of um, dry water flows, and uh, it allows for three types of calculations. Uh, the non-permanent, the simplified non-permanent, and one, uh, the capacity for calculations with the complete Sanvinan equations, which um, makes uh, th this uh, tool very powerful uh, for all sorts of uh, networks, including meshes. So with this function, the program will allow us to design the components of a sewage uh, network with uh, the study in detail of all its basin, we will be able to control the discharge when we have periods of rain for unitary uh, waters. We will also be able to assess the best management practice in low import development, that is to say, good practices for the management and low impact development. These functions are uh, present in the last version of SWMM. Right now, with the version, the current version, well, we we are not able to do it, but these are the trends, and we hope that one day we will be able to update the, the translation, and we will be able to integrate those functions in the version that we are using, and they belong to the most sophisticated uh, sanitary engineering, and we'll be able to custom any object that we include in our system. What are the limits? Well, we've been talking about that before, but we have here a summary. 
what are the limits of that software. So we cannot use it for non-urban uh, big uh, spaces, big basin. We have other models, other hydrological models. It is not modeling the erosion and the sediment transport. So from time to time, some problems are due to a sediment transport and engineering cannot detect them as such. And this is why the analysis are not of a good quality. So we have also it can be due to problems of urban engineering or sediment transport. So it's, it's important to know, especially in some areas, some rural areas. It is not simulating the propagation of a um, polluting agent. Huh? So once we have reduced the uh, polluting agent, well, then we'll we cannot assess what is the situation in the different rivers. There are other models that will be able to, to, to model, to control this polluting agent. We don't have any GIS function nor any interface. We have solved it with, the, uh, with an extension that I'm going to present afterwards. And right now, it is not possible to have a dual model, 1D, 2D. So we right now, we don't know what to do with the surplus water in the nodes. And and it's also an analysis tool. It's not an automatic design tool. So according to the data that we have introduced, we can run the, the model. We can reach some conclusion that we can analyze. And then we can have a diagnosis. But it's not an automatic design tool. I repeat it. What are well, the principles of the uh, software? It, ha it is a three-layer software. We have the rainfall distributed in time and space. Then we have the transformation of rain in runoff. In this uh, runoff, SWMM is working with cinematic waves. It is a model that's working quite well for the runoff models. And then we have the network transit working with three different calculation options that uh, the user can choose, the permanent uh, system, the cinematic wave or dynamic wave. And this will help us to reach some conclusion uh, according to the analysis that we are uh, doing. So we'll start with the rainfall. The software allows us to introduce uh, the rainfall uh, tr from three different points of view, from the intensity point of view, from the partial volume, and from the accumulated uh, volume, the cumul is intensity, volume, or cumulative uh, volume. So we can generate our design rain with the curve that we want. And that information can be stored in three different formats. In our case, that information will be uh, stored in a DBF that we are going to read and uh, that we are going to include in the SWMM model, we will see where we can store that information and how SWMM is going to read it. On the slide, you can also read that the rains can be design rain or real rain. It's interesting to make some simulation with real rain because the information will be uh, much more interesting for our analysis. And when it's not possible, then we can go to design rain. So here you see the user interface that we are going to use if we have enough time. This is a software that has been designed by the Polytechnics of Catalonia. You see the different uh, uh, rain uh, data and the IDF 
a curve and we obtain a graph with uh, alternative uh, blocks. So one, once it has rained and we have introduced the rain information in the program, we are going to see what are the losses uh, with uh, which loss margin is the software working to introduce it in a mathematical model. SWMM is working with Basin as it was a rectangular deposit model. In that situation, in the rectangular model, the geometries are the one that we see here. The rain is falling. We have some losses due to evaporation and that are not always very important uh, to us. We have also some uh, storage um, losses. For example, you see here on the graph, we the, the small portion that we have between the dot line and the deposit. It means that there is always a portion of the rain that's falling and that's not running off because it is absorbed by the land or, and it is retained, it is stored in the, in the land before being introduced in our network. For, we, we can talk about a, a value in millimeter depending on the average slope of the basin. So you have the formula here on the screen. For the permeable parts of the basin, that storage uh, value is zero if you use an infiltration uh, for, from the Soil Conservation Service, and it will uh, amount to different values if the observation model is different. Uh, we have also to uh, know the infiltration due to uh, the losses due to infiltration. So we have permeable and non-permeable uh, parts in our basin. In the permeable uh, part, we have that phenomenon of infiltration. And SWMM uh, allows three different methods, the northern methods, the green amped model and the NC. SSC uh, method. Because of all that information, in practice, we are using the second and third method that we can always use because the information required by those two methods are very easy to get because we only have to use the geology and the uh, soil um, characteristics and slope average. Uh, the Norton method needs more information that we cannot always collect, like permeability, uh, data, etc. I mean, if we can, if we have all the information, then we can use the method of Norton. But if we are missing some information, well, then the second and third method are very useful. Uh, for example, soil use, um, slope map, and geologic map will allow us to uh, make some analysis uh, on the uh, different curves. Finally, when calculating the losses, we have also um, the gains uh, uh, calculation. Some uh, water can be infiltrated in our network. It is very difficult to get good infiltration, good infiltration information, and to know exactly what are the, uh, the deficiencies, the drawbacks of our network. We have to explain it. We have to know exactly what is happening. But it's difficult what to have trustworthy information about that infiltration uh, percentage in our network. So to give you a bit more details, when calculating the losses and the infiltration, the Norton method, the Horton uh, method is working with an infiltration uh, level depending on the slope uh, inclination, uh, but we're not going to 
talk about that. We have the green apt model, with behaving more or less the same. Uh, it is referring to the hydraulic conductivity, and well, we don't need a lot of information about that. So, um, well, if we don't have enough data, well, we don't need to work with this method, and we should use uh, another method. Well, it's a method that is working with only three parameters, the soil use map, the uh, slope uh, map, and the geological map. The soil conservation service only works with two maps, the soil use map and the geological map. A guide that has been published by the National Agency on Water includes a third element, the slope map of the soil, of the land, and it is taking into account another concept according to which a 15% uh, slope land with the same use and the same geology will have a different infiltration percentage than a land with a 0 0.5 a percent of elevation. So according to that agency, well, it is necessary to include a correcting factor, including, well, the slope aspect of the land. So it, it, we have to reclassify the, the land and put a different margin of elevation. To the geological map, well, we also have to apply that recollection and giving three values to that geological map, A, B, C, D, according to its permeability. Uh, those values have been designed by the Soil Conservation Service, so each well, uh, land will have this A, B, C, or D classification. and the soil use map will be provided by the uh, National Soil Institute, and we will have to reclassify to uh, that parameters to obtain the values uh, uh, for our calculation. So, but to calculate the infiltration of the permeable uh, areas is possible. If we have those three layers, we can do it without any problem. In practice, obviously, we are going to do this calculation very quickly. We are going to study those three uh, layers, and we are going to see what is it, its impact on the raster um, showing the infiltration values. I also would like to tell you very quickly that it is possible to model the interaction of SWMM with the land, the network with the land, if we have enough information on the land. So obviously, we need to uh, know the characteristic of the aquifer. And if we don't have the values, well, we can skip that a step. When we have a problem of infiltration, it might be useful to uh, do this uh, study and to invest some financial resources to get the characteristics of the aquifer and of the land and to model that behavior on the basis of the parameters given by SWMM. But in the majority of the cases, we won't get well, the information required. Now let's talk about the key element for the hydrologic analysis, thanks to SWMM. As I told you before, to be able to analyze it with uh, GVSIC GV will allow us to define in details the parameters that are included in the runoff model of SWMM. The runoff model of SWMM is based 
on the rectangular deposit model in which all the basins are rectangular by width and length. They will have an average slope, the one that we see on this graph, on this uh, design, with a flow length and with the same uh, runoff width. So the rainfall will will fall, the rain will fall, we will have a loss of volume uh, because of infiltration, and we will have a flow emitted by the rectangular basin, and this is what we are going to use in the node. All the parameters that SWMM is using for the calculation are the parameters that we see on this uh, subcatchment table. Those that, thanks to GVSIC, are going to be analyzed automatically, manually. It will depend, but we will have lots of details on the values that we will find there. These are basic values for the geological uh, calculation. Then we will include, well, the infiltration, the material, the characteristics of the soil, but we will be able to define an urban hydrology Thanks to GV6, it's a very good tool to do so. A uh, drainage basin linked to a node will uh, present those parameters. First, the node to which, to which it is assigned, uh, to, I mean, the name of the node assigned to a subcatchment. Then we will also have. A, a gauge, uh, a, a rain gauge. Um, so, for example, a city with 10,000 nodes will have 10,000 micro basin and could have 10,000 different rainfalls. No, uh, I think this is not possible. So, we have to assign a, a rain. To, for the sub-basin of the northern area and another one for the southern area. The identifier of the rain gauge, uh, gauge allows us well, to assign a rain to each subcatchment. Then we have the uh, micro-basin area. It would be very easy to do thanks to GV6. We just have to introduce information of the uh, rain related to the micro basin. Then we have the percentage of uh, uh, imperviousness of subcatchment. So it's interesting to know which percentage of the subcatchment is permeable and which percentage is not. So we have no right methodology. We will need to do a picture of the situation. I don't know if we have tele detection analysis method to allow us to identify, thanks to the texture, uh, well, the permeable and non permeable areas. I've done it by hand and I analyze the, the picture and I can define which area is permeable and which one is not. Normally, uh, we have a 90% of permeability in the urban uh, region, in the urban areas. If it's uh, permeable, it's permeable. And if it's not, it's not. And only for the impervious uh, part, the infiltration model will define how we can uh, turn it round. So it is the most difficult parameters to analyze. And, but if we are working with, with a GIS and if we have a raster, well, obviously, it allows us to get quite close to the reality. We also need a width value of the uh, subcatchment. We also need a, an average uh, subcatchment slope. And one more time. GV6 will help us uh, very much. We will, it will produce a digital elevation model. It will produce a slope map. And with the uh, statistic uh, tool, we will be able to determine the average slope data. SWMM 
also request us to identify the naming value for the uh, uh, for the imperial sub areas and also for the previous sub areas as you see in the calculation model uh, rainfall are falling but then uh, the, the rains, uh, the water is cir circulated through the subcatchment area before uh, going back to the surface. So all these parameters are uh, helping the programs to know the speed with which the water is expelled, is expelled by the subcatchment and infiltrated in our network for. Uh, peer view sub areas like uh, concrete or any other uh, materials and for in peer views, well it will depend on other factors so we have been talking about the no depression storage and the depression storage for impervious and peer sub areas we are going to work with the number of curve of the soil conservation service and finally we can uh, talk again about the uh, percent of impervious area with no depression storage, with zero depression storage, and also the flow uh, value, that parameter depends on the fact that as we have a previous sub-areas and imperious sub-areas, we will be able to define if the flow is going from one to the other or, uh, or contrary, or if the uh, water is expelled uh, independently. And finally, the uh, length of the curve, so the width by length should equal the surface. Well, and it's a bit... Uh, intense, but we have to, to see this uh, before uh, going to, to start the practical part. Um, we can calculate in detail the, the uh, depression storage in pervious areas, and with the formula that we have used before, we will reach two millimeter, four millimeter, six millimeter values, and we will know in detail the rain millimeters, the initial uh, rain millimeters that are not being drained. But if we are not able to estimate that parameter, to assess that parameter, and to uh, calibrate and to check that our network is sensitive to this, then it's no use going on. This is the most important parameter, and at the same time, it is the most difficult parameter to assess automatically. This is why we have to study sub-areas per sub-areas. Flow propagation, we are going to see now the uh, calculation method. So we are going to use uh, those uh, models when we will tell uh, GV6 to calculate one way or another. We have to know exactly what are the parameters that the system will have to use, will have to need, well, to use one calculation method or another. So uh, before being practical, we still need to study this. So we are going to see a bit what are the three calculation model with which EPA SWMM is working. We have the uh, steady flow. So it is steady. It means that there's no time in balance uh, according to the evolution of the network, of the rain, of the flows. Taking this into account, well, the steady flow is a calculation method that does exist, that has been designed, but we are not going to use it uh, because it's a complex system, but at the same time, it's uh, too steady to be used. So 
We can also work with another one. It's a non-steady uh, model. It's the kinematic wave flow. That calculation model does not allow to calculate mesh network. We cannot assess the uh, charge input of the pipe. It's very easy and very quick to calculate. That's its main advantage because it is working with less formulas. But if our network is being loaded or if it's being meshed, well, then it's not working anymore. And so we need to know the characteristic of our network to know if we will be able to use that model. It's very quick, it's true, and we could make a calculation, well, in only one minute. So it's very quick, as I was telling you. But it's very important to know the differences between those calculation models because this one does not admit flow regulators like outlet, orifice, or weirs. So if it does not admit those regulators, those archetypes from GV6, if we want to use that model, well, we won't be able to tag any arc with those attributes. It, it will be simply impossible. So we need to know before tagging the arcs and nodes, we should know what is the model that we are going to use because the calculation models are not allowing everything. So we have a simplified model that does not allow outlet orifice or, or weird, but does accept dividers. So when we have a dynamic model, we're starting from the end and We ha can also use the dynamic wave flow. They do allow well, all these uh, uh, regulators, but dynamic does not allow dividers. So I'm not going to tag the nodes with dividers. I, I really have to take this into account when uh, choosing my calculation model. So to tag, I need to know what I'm going to calculate and to know what I should calculate, I should know the advantages and the inconvenience. We, the, the dynamic wave flow is uh, resolving the equation, taking into account friction, pressure, and other values. Uh, and I can have uh, w water flow in one direction or in the reverse direction in this equation. Uh, uh, so it allows us to analyze mesh network and it also allows to analyze the uh, charge input of the system. The problem with this calculation method is that it needs more time, uh, it needs two, three, four, ten second um, period. So the, uh, it, it is uh, well, uh, something that we uh, can uh, stress when comparing it with a steady wave flow. So as a conclusion, I need to define which calculation method I need. Uh, I need to know if I will use the kinematic or dynamic wave flow. In general, kinematic wave flow is not the most interesting uh, method because the urban network in general are meshed. And if I want to analyze the charge and discharge, the load and download of the uh, urban network, I will need to use uh, the outlet orifice or weir that I cannot use in the kinematic wave flow. And dividers, well, are not that important because they are uh, dividers of flow that are much more precise in the uh, kinematic wave flow. So kinematic, dynamic, mesh uh, network, and, and 
charge and, and discharge. And, and thanks to that, I will be able to make a decision. So now we are in our network according to its typology arc and node that we have defined in the data model. We are going to tag the behavior, the mathematical behavior of our nodes. For the nodes, those without any uh, function are called junction. And for the arcs, those without any function will be conducts or conduits. So the junction or conduct models uh, can be found in the documentation that you have received. All the other elements of the network will be classified according to well, the values that we design. So we have all the nodes uh, the, or, or junction and the arcs or, or uh, conducts. And we also have to take into account the discharge point that is one of those nodes. And there are also other elements that might sophisticate a bit more the system. But in general, we will only have junction for uh, nodes and conducts for arcs. And, but we have to know what are the exact elements of our network and how they operate. Um, the flow regulators that we are using for SWMM can be classified under three types. So we have the, the, all the uh, regulators are uh, arc geometry based. So, for example, a, a wheel, a um, A wheel, it's an arc, it's a place where the, um, the, the, the water is being spilled. It's a spillway for, for water. And for the uh, management of the network, the node will be a uh, spillway. But if SWMM sees the uh, wheel as a regulator of flow and at the same time that it is an arc, my spillway will have to be designed as an arc that will join two nodes. So it will be kind of fictitious arc. And the only way to mathematically simulate the behavior of a spillway, uh, even if it's a physical arc, a concrete point of my network, I will need to design an arc and tell SWMM that this arc is this flow regulator. And we can say exactly the same for Orifice. It's another flow regulator. And for Outlet, well, it's a, another regulator, another flow regulator. Orifice is another uh, flow regulator that we find, uh, well, it's a concrete uh, place in the well. So we have here a, a catalog of flow regulators that we are not going to study uh, later on, but I just wanted you to to name that so that you, you know at least that they, that they exist. We have other um, honor elements in the network, like the pumping station, arc geometry. Even if a, a pumping is an, uh, is an inspection chamber with a pump, but uh, the pump is an arc from one node to another. It's also a flow regulator. So we will emulate it as an arc. 
and we also have deposit these are water deposits in nodes and we have also flow dividers there are nodes that are able to divide water in two different flows and as i told you before it's only worth for a kinematic wave flow and to finish well with the theory we will see well, the uh, special cases and flow preparation. If a node is being flooded, we can request SWMM to store uh, the, the water or to discharge the water. So we have to take this concept into account for regulation elements. Uh, we can also assign control rules which you emulate reality. Our network will always have a discharge node, a final node. Well, we will discharge against other existing uh, network, uh, uh, other uh, water mean, water environment against the river, SWMM will allow to model different discharge types. For example, in a coast uh, city in a, where we have, we can decide the, the height of uh, the sea level Uh, the discharge will change with ties and we can have a free discharge or fix set up uh, discharge so depending a bit on the uh, condition that we impose on the system and we are almost done with the theoretical part now we are going to have an overview of what we are going to see after the break. So, once we know more or less how uh, SWMM operates and what are the different calculation methods and its defect and advantages, well, we can then go back to GVSEC and start to play with GVSIC and to prepare the model that will be exported to SWMM. So I explain it very quickly, but this is what we are going to see practically in the second part of the workshop. The first thing that we are going to do is that we are going to create the uh, subcatch uh, layer so we have a micro a network with some nodes. We will use Thyssen uh, polygon, and we will be able to create our own subcatch automatically. For urban hydrology, we think that it is a good method to use a concentric geology for each node, taking into account that not all the rainfall will be introduced in the nodes, depending on the, the slopes. If the node is linked to the associated uh, basin, the associated subcatch, well, it might not receive 100% of the rainfall. So the, the workshop will be like this. It's just one second. Well, we will be able to design all the uh, drain subcatch, subcatches, and obviously you are free to to work with the topographic layer together with the uh, parcels, uh, uh, the zoning. Uh, of the of the city, the different floods and the assignment of all the, the street section uh, of the of the city, 
and if you want to do a good analysis in a problematic area well that exercise is very interesting but in practice today we will see how for all the network nodes we will see how we can generate a process assigning concentric areas concentric subcatch linked to each and every node with that information we are going to see what is the data model that we need to use for those subcatches and we are going to to fill it with information we are not going to fill it fill it all because we would need much more time to do it but at least we will see how we can do it like we did with the the table where we had to put the previous and impervious naming number average slopes etc we will also create the dbf for the infiltration parameters uh, taking into account the number of curves of the self conversation service we'll see what is the dbf for that and finally the last steps uh, they are hydraulic steps we will select and export into dbf all the features of nodes and arcs according to their hydraulic behavior we will assign the parameters and we will export them and we will edit it in PD in BD, DBF and we will create automatically that vert, vertex uh, layer. It's a layer in which arcs have the information about, well, um, their, um, their own design and we will be able to uh, export that information too so this is what we're going to to see uh, in in a minute once we've done that we will just need to run the extension to be able to read the information so we will do the the running of the INPCOM extension and we'll be able to read the solution so we will redefine from uh, EPA SWMM, we will give all the control parameter from the filtration model to the calculation time for the uh, dry water flow. And at the end, we just need to run the model to generate the results, to check those results, and to go back to GV sick with uh, those results and it will be important to define what is the methodology that we are going to follow these are very useful tool for a good analysis but uh, as I said at the beginning it this is not a urban hydrology training course the good engineer guide is full of information to design those those models this is not what we are going to to do here so we need to analyze the results and we need to analyze the uh, result file and analyze some objects some elements to see how they have been behaving under the rain uh, to make sure that the network is consistent with our expectation and it is also very important for our model if we when analyzing that model to see a bit what is the sensitivity um, reaction so we need uh, the assumption of sensitivity. We need to see what are the uh, critical assumption and what are, and we have we need to boot the model in order to see how it is behaving according to um, the different assumption. Obviously, it will have a different behavior with design rain or with real rain. It's very important when designing the, uh, result, the result. So we need to analyze the sensitivity of the model. If I change one or several parameters, it might have an impact on the result. And finally, 
the calibration and validation of the model after the three first step and after our engineering uh, task, we can draw some conclusion of the analysis. And in urban network, uh, we have to make sure that uh, all these results are, are true, uh, that they are trustworthy. This is why we need to calibrate them. We need to validate them uh, together with real data in cities like Barcelona, they know it very well. They, the, the city is full of rain gouge, uh, rain gouges. So we can say that their uh, hydrologic model is permanently calibrated, is continuously calibrated, and they can well calibrate well all the, the pipes and all the system and all the models will immediately. And in the neural network, well, they, uh, they, 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 they learn immediately from, from the result. It's a, a very dynamic system. And as I have a good mathematical model, I have good and trustworthy information from the behavior, I step back and I adjust all the parameters in accordance. After the break, we will we will show you some hints of uh, that uh, system. And to conclude with that first theoretical chapter, we will see how we can uh, go back to GV6 with our RPT file. And we will also be able to tag the features. We will be able to symbolize the nodes and arcs according to the behavior uh, radius and to see how we can charge nodes and arcs. And visually, thanks to SWMM, we will have a very clear image. It's a very good tool for the analysis. The information given by SWMM on the screen and in the file can be completed with a good analy an analysis on uh, the maps. Well, that, that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, we, uh, I'm sorry for this very heavy and intense uh, uh, section, especially after uh, lunch. Well, I don't know if you have any uh, question. Uh, if not, well, then we uh, could go for uh, the break.